Did you want to tell them anything? Well, you have to ask us something. What's I your never favorite? sleepwalked. <laughs> <laughs> what? Hey everybody, welcome to another uh, Ask the Pilgrims. Uh, thanks for joining the Pilgrim Company too. Hopefully we'll start pushing out a lot more useful videos like this where we're sharing some of the things that we learn with you folks that are really interested in the kind of lifestyle we're doing. Maybe you're pursuing the same thing or you're doing the same thing and have insights to share with us. All right, Malachi is going to ask the first question. Okay. Who's this from? you got to read who it's from too. Danny, I think. Denny. Denny Dotry. Doerdry. Dotry. You can only imagine we have a travel trailer for the weekends and vacations. I always imagine if we had to live in it, where would we put everything? All right. Where would we put everything? Hmm. We should film a little video on where we put everything on our storage. <laughs> So this is some of our storage here. Uh, Danielle and her father added this piece. This was not here. And so this is where I keep, well, my clothes are up here, Danielle's are down here, and then I have this storage piece. And this is the, these are the shorts. Well. That's why we got rid of pretty much everything. And are still getting rid of stuff. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. there's a pair of shorts in our bedroom right now. And here's, this is the thing. If you were in a house, you'd be like, Whatever. It's yeah. an extra pair of shorts. But because you're in this tiny space, you're like, I could save a little room. Because I only have a little basket to put my clothes in. These are the shorts. Well, maybe Danielle got rid of them. I had some shorts in there. I got rid of it. Oh, she got rid of them. The storage in the kitchen. Dad. Yeah? Is here. And uh, a little bit up here. And uh, some down here. There's some storage here. There's a few other spots here and there. Danielle also added uh, this thing, which is super helpful. Uh, saves, gives us a lot of extra storage room. Oh, and in the bathroom too. She also added this. Gives some storage, and then in the bathroom, uh, she added this here, which gives a lot of extra space. Oh yeah, and so to save space for me and, and my girth, <laughs> uh, so this thing, overexposed, um, you can pull this out when you're in the shower, quite a ways, and it gives you a lot of extra room in there, which is nice. And then when you don't want it, you can close this up, which gives you more space in the bathroom here. Next one. Next one by Dan Walsh is going to be the best one, because it says... <laughs> Will the Seahawks beat the Bears on Sunday? We need to win. Yay, Seahawks! <laughs> Will they? Yeah, maybe. Probably. I'm not sure. We don't know. I hope they do. What is a Seahawk? Z, what's a Seahawk? It's, it's, a, bird. it's, right, it's a bird. It's a other name for um, Osprey. So he's wondering if they're going to win? Are they fighting somebody? Is it like a bird battle? What is this, Darren? Uh, the next one. Ashley Morin. What are you? No, she's not a moron, Malachi. Moron. Oh, sorry. I love that you guys do this. We live in a 1977 Silver Street trailer full time. People are so curious about our lives, but usually embarrassed to ask. Usually too embarrassed to ask. That's super cool. I want to know more about Ashley. Uh, so I asked Ashley. That's awesome. How long have you lived in it? Uh, what's the number one question you guys get asked? And she said, uh, lots of questions about space. Do you get sick of each other? Um, Sometimes. What? <laughs> what are you trying to say? I think that happens in a regular house too, though. <laughs> oh, yeah, you get tired of people, period. Time. It doesn't matter what space you live in. Well, actually, in your last post, which you guys should check out, it's, um, oh, what's it called? Uh, what is, what is it called, the last post you did? What, yesterday? Yeah. Oh, gosh, I don't know. It's a really good post, but she talks about how there's so many difficulties with living in a trailer, but that one of one of them, one of the positives, has been that we've actually gotten closer, I think, and more patient with, you, with each other. So I think as far as getting tired of each other, it's actually lessened in the trailer. I mean, you, you definitely have more opportunities to get frustrated, right. 
but we're able to handle them better. Uh, well, I think you learn to control. You make a choice to um, either have a good attitude or a bad. And I think in a house, it's just easier to lose it. And I don't really know why it is, but I think you have to really control your attitude and your actions. And um, I just think that you're so much more aware of it, or at least we really try to be. Um, cause it does sometimes it's like, oh my gosh, I don't think I can do this. <laughs> yeah. Angelina Lewis. Um, we are in the, that's a nice name. You liked her name? You should, you should tell her that. You Angelina like would like to hear it? that. I like it. <laughs> okay, good. We are in the mid state of finding an RV for our family of five. Three kiddos under four to live full time. I'm stocked. St what? Stoked. Stoked. Stoked for this new life change. Any advice, tips would be fantastic. What does that mean? I just don't do it. I would just stop your search right now. It's a mistake and it'll ruin your family. Stop it. <laughs> How many kids? Three, three kids, kids under, under four. four. Well, let's start with like the actual. Maybe you found an RV already, but. What are some things in our trailer that you would have done differently? As of now? Yeah, like if we could go out and get a new trailer or a different trailer, what would we look for in it? I know, like for me, the the one thing, we kind of go back and forth in this, but it'd be nice to have one extra slide out. Like we have this slide out and it's a big slide out. But we see some of these like RVs and things that have like four slide outs and we're just like, ah, oh, that'd be nice. I feel differently about that. Because of the weight. The weight, but also people say that they that's where they leak slide outs leak and that's true so i don't think i would after the things that we've kind of gone through with that i think um one slide out is plenty i don't think i'd want another slide out there a lot of maintenance we talk about having a little bit bigger bathroom i think that's one of the things that <laughs> it is very small um so with little ones that you're trying to get in and bathe and all that kind of stuff i think you know our kids can bathe themselves but a bigger bathroom for sure. I think the biggest thing that we did, which was really smart, was we wanted a big living space. Um, Cause you don't spend time in your bedroom, you don't spend time. So I think that we just wanted um, an area that our living room didn't feel super crowded cause that's where we spend most of our time. Cause that's the kitchen and that's the table and that's where we do school. And We just focus on RV stuff. Is there any other advice we give them? I would say, okay, well, so one thing that we got to do, and this happened by accident, but I think it worked out well for us, is we kind of did a two-month trial run in the RV before we actually hit the road. Like, we haven't hit the road yet, you know? What do you do when you just need some space or just to get away for a bit? That's a good one. You guys can ask, answer that one. Okay, so I like if, if mom's cooking, then I like when... um. There's like a big grass area over there that our dad takes us and we play tag. That's good. What do you like to do to get your own space? Well, um, I like to do when... Yeah, you can just go in there. When mom's like cooking, me and mom go in a room and play stuffed animals. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um... I don't know, I like to read, so I'll go in my room and read. Um, or I go outside and like to take pictures and stuff, but since you're always around everybody and it's, you always need space, so I don't know, I like to read or go outside, but... Reading's a good one, because then you're kind of in your own world for a little while. Yeah, it's a pretty good one. Read or she'll draw, and she does go off and take pictures a lot. Um, for me, um, I try to get up before the kids and go hiking or even um, just some time during the day to go for a walk or something by myself. Um, I think that no matter what age kids you have or where you live, but no matter where I go, they seem to follow. So, and Which was the case even in our house. <laughs> yeah, if I went upstairs and I'd be like, oh, I just need a few minutes, pretty soon I'd hear tuk, 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 and all the kids <laughs> following me up the stairs. Alyssa, how do you make a living? I don't know. How do you make a living? Uh, by the way, we uh, I, <laughs> I made this pillow, <laughs> and it looks really good. You guys should make your own pillows. It's kind of cool. Anyways. Uh, 
<clears throat> well, I painted it. He painted it. He didn't make the pillow. So, uh, we actually answered this question in the last Ask the Pilgrims episode, so I'll just kind of go over it briefly, but you can get a little more in-depth in that. And then there's also, a, if you go to our website, suburbanpilgrims.com, and go to the... Okay. I don't get why you wrote, let's run away together. Because you guys are always around us, and we just want to run away. Mmm. Um, nice one. So, anyways, there's <laughs> nice one, zing. Um, so there's a there's a an article on our blog that I go in more depth. So uh, I do video editing, and so I've transitioned from a full time position editing plus freelance to just freelance, and so uh, that's what I'll be doing to earn a living. But there's challenges with that for sure uh, that I won't go into here. But um, relying on freelance as your as your income is uh, can definitely be tricky and, and that sort of thing. So we're still, you know, there's things to work out and things that we're going to learn on the way. So I'm trying to do a lot of other things also, but uh, but video editing is my primary. What's the next one, buddy? You want to read this one? Okay, which one? The candy. Um, did you... Th- did you think about any other options? Converted school bus, tiny house, etc. before deciding on the travel trailer? If so, what were the deciding factors for you? It's a good question. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we did. Actually, at first we had thought about doing a tiny house. Um, but our biggest thing with that was that you could not... Move it. Yeah, that you were had to stay in one place. Um and so that was one of our biggest thing. And like, we'll see people do tiny houses, but they'll do them in regular neighborhoods or they'll buy a piece of property and do it there. But um, yeah, for us, we wanted to be able to travel. Um, and then actually we had saw a school yeah. bus one time that was converted and it, looked it, awesome. it was, it was Old super cool. School, school but again, for us, it was the gas, the gas. Um, and also the mechanical right. because you to get an old, a school bus you'd have to get an old school bus yeah. and I don't have the mechanical skills to keep something like that running yeah. um, and then we also I mean I guess you could pull a car behind it but we kind of like the idea with the travel trailer that you just park it you set up your little house and then your car is free you know it's it's separate and if something breaks in the trailer you're still you still have a car, and it's yeah. not like your engine's attached to your house. You're so still that if, mobile. Yeah, you're still mobile. We're at John Harris. Old John Harris. If you really live nomadic, how do you reg regularly? Register. Uh, register and ends. Uh, Insurance. Insurance. Yeah. Okay, insure your vehicle with no long-term address. Most states won't let you use a P.O. box. I'm doing the same thing in two months. Oh, ooh, fancy. Can I read the next one? Yeah, we have to answer it first, though. I think it'd be rude if we just read their oh, questions and we're like, good question. The same question. Oh, okay. Um, there's actually three different states that we're looking at to change our residency to. Our docile, I think they call it. Um, which is, like, the best states for um, nomadic living are... Florida, Texas, and North Dakota. Mm-hmm. Um, and also they're really good for homeschooling and um, that kind of thing. But there's actually, our friends actually just did this. Um, and so you have to go, you have to get a license um, from that state. But then they also have a company that you can go through. There are several companies and um, they'll do all the paperwork and everything for you ahead of time before you go to get your license. And all your mail and act- everything has to go to they actually have like these little PO boxes but they actually let you use the address of that location so it is considered a residency even though it's a PO box and the company you can set up how often you want your mail sent wherever you're at so if you have a PO box in another state or if you have um you know a friend or something family that you're having mail go to I think we're going to decide on North Dakota just yeah. because they are a lot of people um, do that there, and there are a lot of nomads that live there. Which so. is funny. Once you start going to these RV parks, you start seeing a lot of North Dakota plates. Yeah. And they're usually full-timers. Yeah, they're full-timers, and they say that they'll never go back to their state for, like, three years until they have to update their license. And us coming from California, we're like, wow, we're going to save a lot of money on yes. insurance and things. <laughs> My Jesse. 
What made you want to do this? Did you have to save you you have to save up money? How did you get started? Uh so we actually <laughs> good plug. We're going to have a film coming out. Oh my goodness. Uh pretty soon that we're going to be um uh anyways, it's a film that's going to be talking about our story and why we're doing this and all of that. So that'll get more in depth. Uh, there's also, if you go to our website right now, there's one of our first uh, articles that we put out was about why we're doing this. So there's a little more information there. But uh, in a nutshell, the analogy that I've used for a lot of people, uh, and this just is the tip of the iceberg, but we kind of, if you look at our lives as like a garage, and we are always like putting stuff in the garage, and the garage eventually just gets so full of stuff. And one day you're just like, we got to clean out that garage because there's so much stuff in there that we probably don't need. The best way to clean out the garage is to take all the stuff out of the garage and put it in the driveway and then figure out what do we actually care about, what's important, what do we actually want to go back in the garage, and what do we want to just get rid of. So we kind of did that with our lives. There were a lot of things in our life that we thought that we wanted to change or convictions we had or things that we wanted to do differently. But year after year after year of living the same way, we just never cleaned it out or dealt with it or tried to do anything with it. And so um, this is kind of our way of pairing back and really figuring out what's really important to us in life. What do we want to share with our kids that's important to us? And then what? how do we build our life around that thing? That's kind of it in a nutshell. Did you want to tell them anything? Well, what's I never favorite? sleepwalked. <laughs> <laughs> what? You never sleepwalked? Mm -mm. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, that would be bad now since you're on the top bunk. All right, that's it. That is it. Goodbye, folk. Okay, I'll turn it off. Okay. But I don't know how. <laughs> it looked like you were doing hang loose.